Well, here we are, September 1st. I'm sitting on top of a ridge on the far north end of my elk zone for this year. Never been here before. Don't really know anything. Um, don't even have a plan. I was planning on doing some other stuff and plans kept changing and plans even changed last night. So I'm really not even ready to hunt at this point. Um, I got to sort some different gear out because I had different plans for the first few days of the month here. Um, but uh, now it looks like I'm going to be hunting here solo for elk for the first two weeks. And uh, going to be getting met up with my dad and a buddy for the last two weeks. So um, here to spot two. So going to probably get all the gear out and stuff. But first things first, I'm going to take a nap. I'm just going to throw this, the old sleeping bag like right out on the ground. And just bonk out for a couple hours. It's been a long day so far, long night, long two days, I guess. Here we go, first trip in. Of course, it's right in the middle of the day, just like every time. I always tell myself I'm gonna take it easy on the first day. Next thing you know, I'm hiking in in the middle of the day, sweating balls, but it should be a fairly easy couple mile hike. Then I'm just gonna kinda of hang out and play it by ear from there. But. Got hiked in here a couple miles, pretty much was where I was wanting to get to. It's definitely getting real. <laughs> I am whooped. Just pretty standard first day action, so. I've um, got this sweet old cabin right over here, so I'm thinking I'm probably just gonna set up camp, hang out for a few hours, drink some water, got some water right over here, get some food and rest, and then maybe just kind of boink around here tonight and uh, give, it, give it tomorrow, walk up in this canyon a little bit and go from there. Right now, I just really want to go to bed. <laughs> well, the bumbo effing around has officially begun. Up on a bench behind camp. Got a little bit of feed right there, back there behind me. Or looks like something an elk would eat. So, I'm just gonna kinda get up on the side of this bench and do some cold calling for like the last hour. So it's day three, I have not seen any critters, which isn't too bad. Um, did hear a couple more bugles last night way off, so I do think there's a few elk around here in this area, um, but I need to head to town today. So I slept in a little bit, gotta go get some gas, do some online banking, bill paying stuff that I couldn't do when I left because it was the weekend, holiday weekend no less, so I'm gonna go get that out of the way and then probably do some, uh, kind of just some road scouting. I'm gonna just try to cover a bunch of ground here this week specifically. Hopefully find some elk. Well, 
Well, not too often do I have a problem rocking the old buggy here, but she kind of let me down on this one. Um, about, I'm about a mile short of the end of the road, and things got a little bit hairy, so whipped it around, parked it here. I got about an extra mile just to get to the end of the road now to hike, and uh, got three days of food. Gonna hike in, check it out. I guess this is kind of part of the downside of being the first guy to the uh, new zone. I guess we kind of thought this looked like a good spot. <laughs> And uh, I can tell you right now, I'm not quite to where I wanted to be, but I got a good view and I'm, I'm pulling the plug. I got an hour and a half till dark. I'm gonna drink some water, have a snack, and then just walk back to the car. It's some cool stuff, but it does not look like somewhere I wanna spend some time looking for elk. It's just, it's just all rock. <laughs> the walk of shame is over. So, kind of a pretty slow day, but I suppose what else, I mean, how would I know? Uh, you know, started on the north end of the unit after I hiked out, just checked access to a bunch of different spots, kind of got a feel for the lay of the land a little bit. Headed to the south end, went to town, got gas, then came back up from the south and uh, just started checking access spots, the spots we had kind of picked out there. And uh, crossed two of those off because apparently the roads are private. And uh, now this was the third one from the south and apparently this one is just <laughs> not necessarily where I want to go. So, um, that Well, it's the morning of day four. Um, Got camp packed up already, um, got myself a fresh pair of undergarments on, so I'm feeling fresh as a daisy. Got a little cup of coffee brewed up with creamer, perk of living at the car, and uh, got some leftover sour gummies from yesterday, so that's pretty cool too. Um, so, trying to make a plan for the day, got the old on X up, definitely not going to the three... <laughs> well... After who knows how many miles I've drove this poor buggy in the mountains, I was coming up out of a pretty deep wash that I just went through, turned around and was coming back down the road, and I caught a pretty good sized boulder just as I was cranking it around, getting out of the wash, so. Well, the uh, fluid structure program continues to be the name of the game. I pretty much decided this was just gonna be the scouting portion of the trip, apparently. It's still super hot like in the mid 80s, upper 80s. So um, got all the road scouting done, crossed some spots off, still got a half a dozen that look pretty good. And uh, I think I'm gonna head north now, go, uh, try to blow a few days, maybe visit Tyler Carlson a little bit, do a little bear hunting maybe. Um, and then in a few days, it's supposed to drop about 20 degrees and just stay there for like the extended forecast, so. Well, welcome to day five of Bob's, what's basically turned out to be just me driving around <laughs> Montana and Idaho. Uh, stayed at Tyler's last night, so that was nice. And uh, punching in directions to get to the spot I killed my bull last year in Idaho, and we've seen a bunch of bears eating berries. So i um, going to head up there for a few days while it's still hot, see if there's any bears in those same little canyons uh, to, you know, maybe chase those a little bit and maybe maybe there will be some legit hunting go on here in the next couple of days that's that's the goal anyhow plans changed again already in about 10 minutes I was looking up the directions trying to figure out how to get to the spot that I had seen all those bears last year and uh, got it up on onyx and the, the ridge is on fire in the you know so then I look online and like all the trails are closed there so uh, my go-to bear spot is out that I drove up here to go to um, is is shut down. So I guess I'm gonna drive right back to where I came from and just hunt elk. <laughs> oh man, this is, we're really on point, man. We're just really hitting the ball here so far. It's It's gotta get better than this by the end of the month. still poke back in there since I didn't see anything or what so either way I'm heading for cover <clears throat> elk has been spotted not from the glassing point that I spent six hours at in the morning and evening but uh, right here from the tarp I uh, woke up from my nap was getting my lunch sack out and uh, just heard shit running and I look and right out in front of the tarp here a spike and I don't know a dozen 15 cows just went running by at under 40 I would say maybe 35 uh, yeah 
and then now it's thundering and raining again. So things are things are getting real. I've seen an elk though. Well, I can't see the mountains to the south anymore. They're just they're just socked in. So pretty good chance I'm just gonna sit here for the rest of the day. I got uh, I got a Lewis and Clark book on my phone. I'm catching up on my history. Things have gotten to the point where we're now trying to divert water so that it doesn't run into my tent. I'm still getting a bunch of splash back, but it'd be way worse if all those puddles were running right into my feet. So. Fun fact, apparently only one man died on the Lewis and Clark expedition. Didn't know that. 28 months, one guy died, that's it. Must not have been as bad as I thought. <laughs> I spent the last day right up in there and all this stuff that I'm in basically so I walked came off that walked around this guy and now I'm up on this little finger and I pretty much looped all the way about here and uh, have been looking down into this burn there's a pretty good pretty good cut down in here so I don't know there's no bugles not seeing a lot of sign or rubs really I would say there's just plain no elk here, but I seen like 15 yesterday at lunch that almost stampeded me, so I really don't count those. <laughs> I mean, I seen them, but I didn't. I'm not gonna count. Um. Well, it's the end of day seven. <laughs> the struggle, it's morning of day eight. Not much of an update. Um, this is like the sixth take. I'm trying to figure out how to explain what I think or what was kind of happening and uh, I'm having a hard time describing it. Um, so basically the last couple of days, you know, I got a couple of decent days of hunting in last week and then the last couple of days especially, um, you know, you something kind of, you know, the plan doesn't pan out. So you end up thinking, hey, I'm going to run back to the car and I'll go to a different spot. And I don't know what you think you're going to find over there. Um, something better than what you have, I guess. Um, so you go back to the car and you drive around and then you just kind of don't want to get out of the car. And it just kind of snowballs <laughs> to the point where, you know, you really haven't done much hunting in the last few days. I mean, I hiked a lot, but I didn't really do any hunting. So... I don't know why that is. Um, it happened to me last year, spring bear hunting too. Um, you know, went into a spot, had a plan, wasn't looking good, bailed on that, and then like the next three or four days were just, I just kind of piddled away. So, really gonna try here this second week. Kind of caught myself today after I drove to the second spot and didn't get out of the car for some unknown reason. Um, so I hiked back in here planning on staying a few days the second week here trying to get some legit hunting done and uh you know if it's not going good i guess just <laughs> suck it up and uh you know come back to camp and eat some food and you know get after it again tomorrow um no more of this i came up this morning right off the bat there's a skunk messing around right up here <laughs> I was just doing some cold calling, just cow calls, and I ended up kill, or calling a raghorn bull into 60 yards, so I'm on the board. I seen an elk that wasn't running. Well, that there is one. One big blueberry black bear turd. But... Well, I thought for sure I had fried my camera there today. Pretty much got rained on from noon 
until the better part of the end, uh, end of the evening. So no more action after I called that bull in. Um, thought for sure I had fried my camera, came back, was eating some dinner here at camp, and uh, thought, you know, I'm going to put a different battery in there. Maybe that, maybe the battery died. Apparently I put a new battery in, and here we are, having a little nighttime chat. So, well, it's day 10 or whatever day it is. Morning was pretty much just another wash. Real wet, still rainy. Everything's just soaked. Got the tarp over there, it's pretty soaked. Staying dry under there though, for the most part. So, rocking the full rain gear again here today. Gotta love that. Feel super stealthy in the rain gear. But uh, just kind of midday break here, getting some water out of the old little mini squeeze or whatever it is and uh and have some lunch and then i guess head up the uh canyon for this evening i don't know it looks like well here we are it's day 11. day 11. uh listen for some bugles from my sleeping bag this morning everything is still nice and wet and drizzly um <laughs> Did not hear any bugles from my sleeping bag, so it's uh I guess it's time to get up and have some brunch. I was nice and toast in a couple hours. I'll probably uh work my way around this little drainage here. See if we can't get into something. In the meantime, I'm gonna catch up on a little Saxton Pope hunting with the bow and arrow. So I can have something to talk about with Colton McKillman Gilman. He likes to quote this a lot, so <laughs> Um, glad the sun's come out, things are drying out, and I get to get the electronics back out and talk to the camera a lot more, do more Dear Diary stuff. It's going to be good. It's a big mood changer after a few days of rain. It's nice just soaking up some sun. Well, if you can't tell by the garage sale of equipment here, I'm, I'm packing up. I uh, was looking at the old calendar last night. Once uh, my dad and buddy show up, I got 12, a solid 12 more days to hunt <laughs> before we go home. So, um, a little banged up, not feeling too bad. The bum knee's doing its bum knee thing, and feet are a little beat up, and <laughs> mostly still just prunes from being wet for so long. But, uh, figure a couple of days uh, resting up would probably be a good idea so I'm ready to go for 12 more days but uh, I'm gonna go dry it out so this is gonna probably wrap up the end of the probably the most boring elk hunting video ever uh, yeah I don't know be nice to like cue a montage or something at this point to like wrap it all up but there's really not even I don't think there's anything to montage <laughs> maybe <laughs> so um, Anyway, I guess this is it. I'm gonna pack this stuff, walk out, drive into town, and chill for a couple of days. So, this is the end of two weeks alone in Idaho. I would say hunting elk, but apparently I wasn't even hunting elk. So, <laughs> uh, maybe the next two weeks will be a little bit more action packed. If nothing else, there should be a, you know a larger scene of characters instead of just me. So that should kind of lighten the, you know, liven the mood a little bit. But anyway, <laughs> that's a wrap, man.